Hey everybody, thanks for being here. This week we're on Flaming Gorge Reservoir for those world-class kokanee. Now if you want to learn how to catch more fish, stay tuned. I'm Justin Wolf and this is Angler West Television. This morning we've launched out of Buckboard Marina on Flaming Gorge Reservoir to target the lake's high-quality kokanee salmon. We're with Mike Hall along with Steve Lynch from Procure and Bob Schmidt from Max Lure. It couldn't be a prettier day to troll for Trophy Kokanee. On this side we just rigged up a double D Dodger and one of the wedding ring double whammies and we're going to set it down to what about 35 feet Mike? Uh, between 30 and 35 feet seems to be producing the best right now. Okay. And then on the other side we're going to put on a sling blade with the cha-cha uh, squitter. And on this side we're going to put a little Kokanee Magic Pro Cure. This stuff is great. Catch your fish anywhere you want to go. I'll put it on the inside of the sling blade here and that helps to attract the fish in. Okay, we run a double rig with large hooks, size 2 hooks. This will convert your bites into fish in the boat better going to a larger hook. Uh, this is a custom rig of course and we're putting Berkeley Powerbait maggots on one on each hook, and it's a double snelled rig. Don't, don't forget the smile blade, that's the most important part. So, so Mike, I noticed you're using the maggots. Is, is corn a good attraction out here as well? Oh yes, corn is definitely uh, what's for dinner with kokanee. The uh, magic that we use on that from Procure is excellent for toughening that up and keeping it on the hook. Just use a good quality shoe peg white corn and the dye systems are great. The fluorescent pinks and greens are excellent. Okay. We just left it on the counter this morning. So yes, tomorrow sir. we'll have the corn. Yes sir. <laughs> Got you covered Steve. I brought some. Love you brother. Uh, set it back about 20 feet and then I uh, dropped her down to 31 on the downrigger. We want to keep these right now with the way the sling blade and the uh, double D are tuned. I'll show you later on how to, how to bend those just exactly right. We want to keep it about one and a half mile an hour and that a little bit slower than normal. Uh, and it'll attract in the fish better. The, you get better lure action at different speeds depending upon how your dodger is tuned. Uh, when you bend them, you generally want to troll a little bit slower. So one in 1.3 to one and a half miles an hour is right exactly where we'll stay today. And that, that seems to turn these fish on in the cold water. The temperature right now at surface is between 55 and 60 degrees, but it doesn't go very deep. There isn't much wind. There's a lot of current flow because of the snow melt on this late spring we're having, and that will influence your fish. If you can find the current flows, you'll find the salmon. I don't care if it's salmon or kokanee or steelhead, current is the most important factor to find. If you find the current, find the edge of it, the seams, it doesn't matter which lake you're on, which body of water, even the ocean, that's where you're going to find salmon. Kokanee are just a landlocked salmon. We're dead center in the lake and most people would generally say, well, uh, the current follows the old river channel in the lake, and that's not true. It follows from point to point. Any kind of geological funnel where the lake comes close together will cause that current to concentrate. If you go back over your hot spots over the years, you'll find that's where that is concentrating the current or also the hot spots. Uh, right now, we're right in the main part of the middle part of the lake. We're probably a mile and a half from the river channel but we're exactly in the middle of that current, the inflow current, and it uh, definitely will make a difference. The more inflow you have and the more outflow you have, the greater the current. Yesterday I was major, measuring the current by my GPS going with the current, and it would, uh, uh, that surface was about one half mile an hour, which is pretty good on an inland lake. That's a pretty good current. That means subsurface, that current can be flowing three to five miles an hour. Uh, current is basically not only smell, but current is how all salmon find their tributary rivers when they spawn. And that's how they migrate, is by the currents. Uh, a lot of people don't take that science to, to 
the heart, but it'll make a big difference on the amount of fish you catch. So Mike, what's the ideal temperature for catching these fish? With kokanee, it's 52 degrees. They can tolerate temperatures as high as 70 degrees, but the warmer it gets or the colder it gets, the more lethargic, the less they bite. So ideally, you want to find water that's between 50, 55 degrees. Perfect is 52 degrees. Well, I'm 52, let's go find it. <laughs> yep, uh, I'll, we're trolling right now at about 35 feet. I'll guarantee if I run that fish off down, it'll say 52 degrees. Welcome back to Flaming Gorge Reservoir. I'm Justin Wolf. Not far from Manila, Utah, Flaming Gorge is famous for its big kokanee. And today, a Max wedding ring with an orange diamond smile blade behind a double D dodger is irresistible. But you still have to find the fish. The current comes across this side. There's a big peninsula underwater that comes out here. And those fish get up in 50 to 70 foot of water in here on the flats. It's also towards the center of the lake, which builds more heat during the day. And that, that makes a big, big difference. Everything beyond current with fish life is, is based on temperature. The big thing, if you want to really become proficient at fishing, if you enjoy catching lots of fish, then learn the why. Most people go out on the lake and say, gosh, I think I'll go fishing today. And they don't really understand why they're catching fish or the science behind it. If you start diving into the science and start reasoning it out, you'll start putting things together to where it doesn't matter which lake you go to, you'll catch lots of fish. Sure. That's a lot of good information. I mean, this is the first time that I've been on this lake. But you know, they say that 10% of the fishermen catch 90% of the fish. So that seems to be true here as well as anywhere else, right? Oh, absolutely correct. Those 10% know the why. <laughs> <laughs> no, we'll just leave it there and keep going. There we go, fish on here. Okay, you're Double up. Trouble. Double trouble. Not bad. Uh -huh. the little guy that's got you think they want to come to dinner or are they? There we go. <laughs> well, Mike, that didn't take long, did it? Nope. I got good electronics, it tells me which ones have got their mouths open. There's another kokanee following this one up, seeing what it's eating for dinner there. Steve, that looks like a good fish right there. Yeah. That's over two pounds. That's a good dinner fish. I want to get this big boy first. Sorry, we can bring him to you, raise sir. It, raise your rod tip. Okay. Well, hold that full. <laughs> <laughs> Holy smoke! Look, he's bruised. He's been either hit with a prop or hit with another fish. Mackinac's had a hold of him. The one that's got a big bruise on his oh, side. Yeah. I'm telling you, the wedding rings with an orange smile blade, they're on. We've got two different rigs there. One the cha-cha with the orange blade. One the wedding ring with the orange blade. So that's the one thing in common there is they both have the orange blade this morning. See, we're just hitting the edge of the uh, channel coming up on the flat into the shallow, warmer water. That's where we picked those two fish up, so it makes quite a bit of difference on location. How do you bleed them, Mike? Uh, you can if you want. You can bleed them if you want, but these aren't like the migratory fish or the salt fish. They are the best tasting kokanee in the world. You can go anywhere you want, you won't find any any finer dinner than a kokanee out of Flaming Gorge. Okay, as we're going downstream in the current, we cross the deep channel, which is 100 foot deep, and then we come up to about 45 foot of depth. That edge builds up a lot of heat in that shallower water, so those fish will set towards the leading edge of that, that drop off. And that's exactly where we picked those fish up. So the current will actually, or the structure, excuse me, the current against the structure or the structure determining the current flow will concentrate the fish. And that's exactly what we had there was a concentration of fish on the leading edge. <laughs> Yahoo! Didn't take long, <laughs> That one there looks like a dandy. Staying low. 
Might be a rainbow. No, he's looks, looks silver. <laughs> Reach down and pop he's your doing down a nice rigger run. Up. Look at that, feel in line. There he is, that's a nice one. Look at that. Okay. Nice fish. Isn't that a nice wedding fat ring fish? there and double D? Well, nice boys, we got enough for soup. <laughs> Isn't that nice? Nice fat fish there. That fish there will weigh just about two and a half, two and three quarter pounds. It's right at 19 inches. Done this time Beautiful like fish. <laughs> Couple. Thank you, Mike. Oh, thank you. you. This is more fun watching you guys catch these. We're on Flaming Gorge Reservoir with my call, Bob Schmidt and Steve Lynch. We seem to have the right color and action at the correct depth, but as the sun rises and the lake warms, we may need to make adjustments. But for now, we're zeroed in. We just put the Go Fish camera on the line and we already had a hookup. We, I hadn't even put it in the rod holder yet. Yeah, we'll bring her on over here if you want to behind. Okay. That's a nice one, too. Well, I'd rather be lucky than good any day. <laughs> Where do you want to be? Just come backwards. All I can right, say sir, is you're I'll... living right, Bob. That wedding ring is tough to beat. Get a favorite. They just lift here. off. You ready? Yes, sir. He doesn't want in the boat, does he? Take your time with him. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait to see that video from the camera. That's, That's pretty gonna cool. That's going to be awesome video. We got that on just immediately. Smacked it before we even headed in the rod holder. Four times or not, I've seen it. Okay, if you put a camera on there like the go fish, when that drops down, those fish target that and come over to see what it is. And if you've got what, what uh, a good bait on there, you're you're gonna catch them. One of the neat things about these lures, you, you know, it came with this color. But I want more of an orange blade, so all we have to do is peel this blade off, and then put the orange on, and we'll be in business. Do we want to put an orange? Orange bead in it too, or? Well, well, yeah, if you want. Okay. Fairly up to you. I'd leave that chartreuse one on and change out the other one personally. So I'd, if I was going to change one, I'd change the pink. But okay. Pink, pink and orange. Off, yeah. Try pink and orange. Yep. Okay, we'll do it. Sure. Okay. They've been feeding on a lot of uh, green. So I think that'll be a color we'll get to sometime today too and see how they like that. Either way. Oh no, you're right, you got it out there huh? first. Okay. Uh, actually they're feeding on plankton and the plankton is actually a Kelly green, forest green color right now. So green lures are kind of match the hatch. Sometimes if you switch around, fish particularly coconut are very, very sensitive to color. If you have one extra bead in there, the right color, it'll make the difference whether the lures a success that day. Right now, that that diamond orange blade, <laughs> those that's the killer. The blade, Thanks, sir. 
So one of the nice things about wedding rings, double whammies, basically the double whammy is a two hook version of the wedding ring, is we sell all the components. So you can buy the wedding ring stack beads, you can buy the wedding ring rhinestones, you can buy the different color smile blades. So like Mike said, different colors make a difference sometimes. Mm -hmm. This way you, you can, can just exchange the, the pieces and you're right back out of it with a new color. Another thing, these smile blades are tunable. So if you want a faster action, you can pinch them down. If you want a slower action, you can widen them up or keep them at the factory setting like that. And that change in speed and reflection will also make a really big difference on some days. Another nice one. She's already up on top of the surface there. Another camera fish, huh? Alright, for that net, Bob. Getting close, she's still coming in. The uh, It's kind of funny, the uh, wedding ring's been around for 50 years now. This is our 50 years. A lot of times they're overlooked because they're not brand new. But as you can see, 50 years later, the fish still love them. The double hooks, when they come up and swipe at it, the double hooks seem to work best. A lot of times if you run a single hook, they'll miss it. Most kokanee fishermen use a double hook rig. And that's the reason for it, is they, it hooks them better. Remember, it's it's not how many bites you get, it's how many fish you put in the boat. Welcome back to Flaming Gorge. I'm Justin Wolf. We're getting steady action with Dodgers tuned for optimum performance. These are a little tip on that we came up with. This is a double D Dodger and we also have the sling blade. What I like to do is a 60-40 band. 60% towards the nose, 40% towards the back, and I'll put about a 45 degree bend in it. That allows you to, to have a harder kicking action, but it also slows the lure down. Most people want to speed troll when they get into the uh, sling blade, and if you want to do that with the double D or with the sling, make sure that they're flat. If you want to more action and I've found I catch more fish the longer I can leave the lure in front of them. So I like to troll slow about a mile and a half, 1.3 mile per hour. So I'll take and bend it on a 60, 40 bend. And they bend fairly easy. Uh, there again, you don't want to bend it past a 45 degree angle. And that allows two planes to flash on. So what I'm doing is I'm taking a, a Dodger, which rocks back and forth, and I get a strobe flash. I get a reflection off this bend as well as off this bend, as well as off this bend, this bend. So I've got four different sides to refract light from, which helps to attract the fish also. Plus, it kicks harder towards the tail. Now, with these, we have adjustment holes, and on the sticker, it tells you which side, so you can go right or left. If you go back on the outside hole, you go back 100 feet, you'll be 18 foot to the side of the boat. So we get what we call a horizontal trolling spread, which is left to right, which covers more water. It's, the orange has slowed down, we're not catching as many fish, so we're trying a different color. Uh, we might go through two or three colors, but we'll find another one that works just as well as the orange was. And it's a good idea to change those colors once a day, particularly when your, your bite starts to slow down change colors because that's generally the preference of the fish. They want something a little different. So I like doing two kernels on each hook. I know a lot of guys only like one, but I'm a believer in bigger baits, bigger fish. What we did is we soaked this for over 24 hours in some Procure Kokanee Magic. And uh, as you can tell, that's going to give a nice extra flavor and longer lasting scent with the corn. This is the scent flash. We're going to use it for an attractor instead of the dodger. So we're going to go ahead and get that opened up here. You just push these snaps down and in like that. Then it comes apart. We're just going to put some corn right in there. 
<laughs> Put the corn right in there and we should be bringing fish in from far away. And I'm going to tip the hooks with corn as well. Just going to smash those two down, push that back one down and in, and it's all set to go. And we're actually got this uh, set up with an ultra release on here. What that's going to allow us to do is put this on the downrigger. This will hook to our line on the fishing rod. And then when the kokanee hits, this will stay with the downrigger ball. And we don't have anything but the little wiggle hoochie we're fishing and the kokanee. Mike, you want a 27 still? Yep. Just take it down slow. Okay, the weather's heated up. It's midday. We're going to check the depths and see exactly where 52 degrees is. Then we're going to try that. 64 degrees at the surface, 5 foot down, 62, 59, 10 foot down, 57, 15 foot down, 57, 20 foot down, 55, 25 foot down, 54 at 30 foot, 53 at 35 foot, and a 52 at 40 foot. So the ideal temperature is at, at uh, 40 foot. Look, there's a fish right there at 40 feet. The downrigger ball's just above it. That's got to be a kokanee. You're going to oh, drop her down to 40? Yeah, put her down 40 feet. Let's see, what, see if there's anybody home. I told you that bugger was hungry. I said, put it down 40 feet. I told you he was hungry. Good job. <laughs> Double. <laughs> That's a fun began. Mine came off. That's the realest one so far. Another fine day on the pond. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. You know, without the support of the sponsors, there would be no show. So please thank them when you can. Now, get out there and do some great fishing.